to bring the singing. Alright, so we're going to start with 410 when the morning comes. Dry hills, dark gone, hairy hair, and we cannot understand. All the ways that God will lead us in that blessed promised land. But he will guide us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand him better by and by. We're singing by and by, oh, when the morning comes. Oh. think about previous year or years even sometimes but I also feel like it's a time to look forward 
and think about what, what am I aiming towards, what am I shooting for. And obviously God, God decides the outcome, but I, I, I get excited about goals. Um, so I tend to choose a theme each year, a word or two words. Last year my theme was peace. And that was, I learned a lot. I learned that peace comes through conflict. <laughs> At least for me, it does. Um, and I also learned that peace comes through clarifying and simplifying my life. Um, but this year, I'm really excited about my theme because my theme for this year is no regrets. And not in like the YOLO, you only live once, like do everything you can kind of way, because that's what the world tells us, how you can live without regret. That way of living, as we all know, actually leads to a lot of regret, um, because it's selfish. But the way that God designed us to live without regret actually is based on repentance. And that's found in, in 2 Corinthians 7, it says in verse 10, godly sorrow brings repentance. That leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. <coughs> and <clears throat> I think I repentance is, repentance is not something I naturally feel excited about. It feels more daunting maybe than anything or scary. But the idea of living a life without regret is really exciting to me. And I think the idea of being made more and more like Jesus and, and being able to experience the peace, again, that God wants to provide us is really something that I want to live for. And I am, I'm just excited for what God is going to do through, through each one of us this year. And, and I hope that we all can have a year of no regret, of really living in, in a godly mindset so that we can experience all that God has to offer for us. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and pray for our service this morning, and then we will continue singing. Father, thank you for this morning and this time to be able to come before you and worship you. God, I know that it's easy sometimes to come to church, maybe as a tradition or as something that we've carved into our schedule and not really um, stop and think about why we're here, God, that we're here because we want to worship you and that we're here because we love you and we want to honor you with our whole being. And I pray that we would do that this morning and that we would put aside any distractions or discomforts. Um, God, that we can bring our, our sorrows and our joys to you this morning and that we can hear your word um, delivered to our hearts. We love you and we pray that you would speak through each person this morning. It's in your sons and we pray. Amen. 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 Let's all stand and sing. We're going to sing uh, song number four, His Love Endures Forever. Before uh, Jay comes up and preach the word. So where are the brothers? I need some help. Set up the bass line, right? Thanks to the Lord for he is good. He is love and forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords.
son to die on a tree. over to uh, Psalm 136. There's a lot of Psalms. I spent a lot of 2019 reading through the Psalms, uh, just for my own personal devotionals in the morning. And, and I, it was really encouraging because I'm not always the most effusive in my prayer life. Uh, I don't always know what to say. I'm, I'm grateful the Spirit speaks sometimes when I don't even know what to say. Um, I, I, I more easily tend to read and study, but prayer does not always come natural. And so reading through the Psalms has really helped my prayer life. We're going to read through Psalm 136 in, in just a minute. Uh, that's actually where the song that we just came, uh, that we just sang came from, from this Psalm. Uh, and, and you may have grown up in a church, as I, I visited some friends' churches when I was in high school sometimes. We, not because I necessarily wanted to, but that's just what their parents did. We would go out and party and then go to church together the next day. Uh, but anyhow, uh, when, we, when we would go to church at this very traditional sort of like high church, you know, there would be a creed that would, everybody would just kind of say mindlessly. Uh, and they, they knew it, or if they didn't know it, it was in the bulletin, and they would just read it. And maybe that was kind of the preacher's way of just making sure at least they're saying it. And maybe something will stick, and they just repeated it every week. And it was, man, even as a non-Christian, I was like, well, this seems a little bit empty. Uh, we're going we're gonna to participate in reading Psalm 30, 136 in a minute. And it's not that. It's not a creed. It's not just something that we're going to say over and over again, His love endures forever. I, th that's not what I want us to do. But as we say it together, I want us to think about what it really means. As the psalmist goes through each of the things that God has done in the past for the nation of Israel, it, it's a way, it's, it's written as a call and response, as a way for Israel to affirm, yes, God's love endures forever. Uh, the Holman Standard uh, Bible, which I tend to read in the morning on my own, because it's just a little bit different than the NIV, and just enough different that it kind of makes me engage my mind, you know, because NIV, we can read a lot and just sort of read over it. But, yeah. So read different versions of the Bible. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, but in the Holman version, it says, His love is eternal, which is just different enough. It means the same thing. His love endures forever. His love is eternal. That as I read through line after line of God's promises that he has already done, it helps me think, well, yeah, his, his promises applied then. And they apply right now, too. His love applied then because of all the things that he did for the nation of Israel and all the things that he did for me personally. And it applies now because his love is eternal. I want us on this first Sunday of 2020 just to focus in on God's love being eternal. Yeah. Last year, and the year before, and millennia before, but also now for this year, for 2020. That God's love is eternal. So as we read through this, this is participatory. I'm going to read through the statement, and then I'd like for all of us to say His love endures forever. As a way to affirm that this is true. And then we'll go from there. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To Him alone who does great wonders. 
Let's stop right there for a second. I need somebody to testify about how God has done great wonders in your life in the past year. Because that's part of what this is. It's not just repeating, right? It's not just repeating the phrase, but it's meant to get us to think about God's done great wonders. Okay, go for it. Verse, uh, verse 5. We're, we're still doing this, the call and response, okay? Who by his understanding made the heavens? His love endures forever. Who spread the earth upon the waters? His, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights? His, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day? His, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night? His, his love endures forever. Now we're going to transition for a second. Because this was about God's creation, right? And we're going to transition, and, and the psalmist is getting the Israelites to think of all the ways God has brought them victory. And, and here, he's talking uh, militarily, you know? And uh, for us, it's probably not going to be the same about God smiting our enemies. But I think there is a way to apply it. We'll talk about that in a second. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt. His love is Let's think about that for a second, though. If you are enslaved, oppressed for generations and generations, and your oppressors are killing your children, and, I mean, God's love endures forever. The, the Bible has violence in it. I think we, we have to be able to, to tackle that. Verse 11, and brought Israel out from among them with a mighty hand and outstretched arm. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder. His love endures and brought Israel through the midst of it. His love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His love endures forever. To him who led his people through the desert. His love endures forever. Who struck down the great kings. His love endures forever. And killed the mighty kings. His love endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites. His love endures forever. And Og, king, king of Bashan. And gave their land as an inheritance. An inheritance to his servants. Let's talk about a miracle God has done in the recent past. Because these are all things that the nation of Israel could not have done. They could not have done this. They did not have military strength. They didn't have the training. They didn't have the soldiers. And yet God did it. What's a miraculous thing that God has done? A victory that God has given you in the recent past? All right, verse 23. To the one who remembered us in our low estate and freed us from our enemies, who gives food to every creature, give thanks to the God of heaven. Let's talk for a second about just something that we want to thank God for publicly. Make sure everybody knows how grateful we are to our God because his love endures forever. It's not exactly how I'd want it to be, but I'm grateful that God has brought us this far. Amen. And I think that's incredible because a lot of times, yeah. I don't know if you do this. You, you probably do this. I for sure do this. Where I'll be grateful when I get exactly what I want. <laughs> I'll be grateful when the situation is exactly as I think it should be. But until then, I'm not grateful. I'm anxious, I'm worried, I'm bitter, I'm angry, whatever those negative emotions may be. Right. But, but once God does exactly what I want him to do and it's completed, then I'll be grateful. Right. But man, if I'm waiting for that, I'm going to be waiting for a long, long time. Because we're all works in progress and all of our life situations are works in progress. And, and actually, thank you, Catherine, for setting me up because that goes into what we're going to talk about next. What happens when you don't feel grateful? <laughs> what, what about if you don't look around at your situation and think, God has done the miraculous. Amen. Bless him. Won't he do it? What are you supposed to do then? I think we can still choose to be grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Because our choice for gratitude doesn't have to be rooted in our current situation. It doesn't have to be rooted in maybe all the, the external blessings that we see, but, but a faith and a trust to know that God's working anyway. Whether we feel it or not, whether he's absolutely answered our prayers exactly as we wanted or done something very different, and it's still a work in progress. To do that, though, I think 
We've got to let the Bible teach us. And we all in this room are so rooted in the Bible that it's, it's easy to just read it and forget the words that we're reading. It's easy to just say his love endures forever and forget what we're saying and affirming the fact. And we just repeat it. And it does kind of become an empty creed. In fact, uh, Samuel Chadwick, who is a, uh, uh, a theologian and um, teacher in the early 1900s, said, truth without enthusiasm, morality without emotion, revival without soul are all things Christ unsparingly condemned. Destitute of fire, they are nothing more than a godless philosophy, an ethical system, and a superstition. And our religion can sink into superstition if we're not careful. If we just do things because it's routine. Sometimes it's good to do things because it's routine. And you build a spiritual habit, a spiritual discipline, and that's great. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when it's only routine. It becomes empty and a superstition. Leonard Ravenhill said this, sound doctrine has put most believers sound asleep. Whoa. For the letter is not enough. That's true. It must be kindled. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. I know. It's good. I'm quoting it. That's why I'm quoting it. I, I would also add that sound doctrine not only must be kindled, but must be personalized. We've got to read the Bible. It's written yeah. to them then and there, but it's written for us here and now. And we've got to read it like it is for us. These are God's words for us. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Read along with me here. You can read silently. We won't do the call and response thing anymore. <laughs> Although I think that's kind of cool. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 starting in verse 3. Paul says this. Praise be to the God and Father of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ overflow into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we're distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If we're comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. Paul wrote this. It's from him to the church in Corinth. But it's for us. And I think it's a lot easier to read it as Paul saying, Paul's sufferings are for the church in Corinth. Paul's sufferings are for us so that we can learn from that. It's harder to read it and personalize it and say, my sufferings are God giving me an opportunity to experience God's comfort. Yeah. My comfort from God is so that I can share comfort with other people yeah. as they go through the very same sufferings. That's harder yeah. to say. It but if it's not personalized, it loses its meaning. Right. And so here's what I've done with this scripture. I'm going to read it again, and I'll take a little bit of poetic license, which normally I would say, don't do that with the Bible. But in this case, I think God understands. <laughs> Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. And the God of all comfort, who comforts Jameson in all his afflictions, so that Jameson may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort he himself receives from God. For as the sufferings of Christ overflow to Jameson, so through Christ his comfort also overflows. If Jameson is afflicted, it's for your comfort and salvation. If Jameson is comforted, it's for your comfort, which is experienced in your endurance of the same sufferings that he suffers. And Jameson's hope for you is firm because he knows that as you share the sufferings, you will also share in the comfort. I think we need to personalize this 
scripture. It's written for us. What, what are we supposed to do when we don't feel grateful? What are we supposed to do when the situation doesn't necessarily spark praise and blessings? Well, we should change our mindset and choose to believe that affliction and adversity and hardships and difficult things are a God-given opportunity for us to experience God's comfort in a new way. Yeah. That's hard. That's, that's tough. But we can choose to do that this year. We can, we can live grateful all year long, no matter what the situation. Number one, because God's love is eternal. It endures forever, back then and here and now. But number two, because we can choose to believe that every challenge, every adversity, every difficult thing, every, every time we suffer, whether it's small, like somebody slights you in the fellowship or somebody cuts you off in traffic. By the way, can I just brag for a second? <laughs> My sinful nature, I would totally give in to road rage. And I would cut people off all the time and do it just for spite because they did it to me. The other day, somebody cut me off and then did one of these things. And you know what I did? I'm so humble. I was like, she's having a bad day. I hope she has a great day. true transformation. And I just kept driving. Thank you. Hey, I might need one for 100, but I got that one. I got that one, all right? <laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> miraculous. That is, that is miraculous. That's happened to us. <laughs> I'm a work in progress, y'all. I'm a work in progress. Don't tell any stories, Lauren. That's enough. That's enough. Here's how, here's how we need to read this, all right? He comforts Milo in all his affliction, so Milo may be comforted, may comfort those who are in any kind of affliction. He comforts Lauren in her affliction, so Lauren may be comforted and may comfort those who share in her affliction. He comforts Cindy and Cindy and John and Henry and Frank and Catherine in their affliction so that they can comfort those who are going through some things. Oh my God, this woman, she dumped all her affliction, excuse me, and she dumped all her affliction and I don't know the affliction. Oh he comforts God. Catherine in her affliction so that Catherine can comfort those who are feeling afflicted. He comforts Stacy so that Stacy can comfort others. And Leslie and Alex and Josh and Brandon and even the back row back there. <laughs> this is true for y'all too. It's true for y'all too. God comforts you. And it may not be he comes down and gives you a gift. It may be through your family. Through your friends. As you go through hard things. You can choose to believe that God's teaching you some stuff. So that you can have a positive impact on the people around you. And James, God comforts James. And his affliction. So that James can also comfort other people. How do we remain grateful through hard things, through even suffering? Because this scripture says, if we're personalizing this, this scripture says Christ's suffering is going to overflow into our lives. Whoa. Christ went through some stuff. Jesus had a tough life. He had a fantastic life. He had a great life. But he had a tough life. And if this applies to us, we're going to go through some things. But we can remain grateful because we choose to believe that this is a God-given opportunity right. to experience God's comfort in a new way. And then, therefore, to be able to comfort other people who are going through the same things. This is, this is for us. His love is eternal. His love endures forever. Whether you feel it right now or not, it's just there. It is. But we can do a better job of focusing in on experiencing God's love when we choose to view it in this way. We're going to take communion right now. And uh, it's, a, it's a weekly time set aside for us to remember Jesus' sufferings, but also his resurrection. And just as the scripture says, not only do we get to share in his sufferings, we get to share in his resurrection. And as we pass the communion trays, I want us to think about not only how we might share in his sufferings this year, but how we might live resurrected because of his resurrection this year. That's what I want us to sort of bend our minds on and meditate on for the next few minutes. Let's pray. God, thank you that you do love us. And uh, we don't always 
understand what you're doing. We don't always know what you're doing. We definitely don't always feel love when we're going through hard things, but your love is eternal and endures forever. Help us to choose to be motivated by your love, to be grateful for your love, and to experience your love in great times and in hard times this year. God, I pray that in 2020, can be a year that we experience your love and comfort not like no other. And that probably means we're going to have to go through some stuff. And I don't necessarily want that, but I do want us to know more about you and, and experience your comfort, God. So please do what you're going to do and help us to remain faithful and grateful and loving. We're grateful for Jesus now. I pray that we can reflect and meditate on his sufferings and his resurrection and his victory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Part of your community meditation, we're just going to sing 359 Amazing Grace.
our special church rate is contingent upon everybody in the church 100% signing up for the weekly newsletter, which is um, lots of great content and uh, some cool quizzes and stuff like that. Uh, it's just a way for Douglas Jacoby to stay in touch with us and for us to be aware of his ministry, but also we get a, a reduced rate as far as a church membership for all of the content, the backlog of years and years and years of lots of great Bible study tools. So if you have not already done so and sign up for the newsletter, go ahead and text uh, disciple to this number. I'm going to give you a number to text the word disciple to, okay? That number is 66866. 66866. And then you just text the word disciple to that number, and uh, I think you'll be prompted uh, for your email. And you put that in, and we get very inexpensive content. Now, uh, primarily what I would like to do is the first 40 days of the year, uh, Douglas has put together a devotional series on Matthew 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount. That's actually a lot of what our preaching is going to be coming from as well as the Sermon on the Mount, that section of scripture. There's daily devotionals. Uh, that now, once you uh, go through this process, you have access to all of them, uh, and you can read on your own. You can listen to their podcasts, uh, so you can listen and read simultaneously. That could be your, your daily devotional time. You can do that in addition to whatever else you want to do, if you want to do it that way. But I'd like for everybody in the church to be able to go through these things together, so that we're learning the same things. So, any questions about that? Great. I think we're done with announcements. Anybody want to stand for one final song? It's going to be 719. Jesus will fix it. 719. Trouble come my way. Trouble come my way. Gotta pray sometimes. My Jesus, he will fix it. Telling you, Jesus. My Jesus, he will fix it. In a while, in a while. Trials come my way. Trials come my way. Gotta fight some time. Gotta fight some time. Trials come my way. Trials come my way. Gotta fight some time. Gotta fight some time. Lay awake at night.